So good evening, everyone. Welcome to the session on React JS. So in today's webinar, we are actually going to get an understanding of what exactly is React JS. And you know, so I hope that we will be having an interesting time understanding details about React and how exactly it works. So let's move forward now. So this is basically the agenda for today's webinar. First section talks about JavaScript. The second section talks about what exactly or why exactly ReactJS is useful. Uh, the third section focuses on what is ReactJS. The fourth section focuses on the virtual DOM. And the final section you know, talks about the different applications using ReactJS. So let's now move ahead to the first section that is JavaScript. So what exactly is JavaScript? So JavaScript is basically a programming language which is predominantly used for a client-side implementation. It initially started off as a tool or a technology for you know, predominantly doing client-side validation. But as the time has progressed now, it has moved into a full-fledged technology language which can be used both for client-side as well as server-side implementation as well. Okay, so in generally what happens is we basically have a, a HTML which is predominantly used for defining the layouts. And then we have CSS which typically takes care of the styling part. JavaScript along with these two technologies and it can also be used for you know performing operations and manipulations on the html and the css so when it comes to web applications and browser implementations javascript has a very strong role to play it can also basically configure the way the content will look like how exactly different type of events are going to be handled in the web application and so on so javascript is a pretty powerful language and it has been in the usage for many years okay and right now, the whole focus of JavaScript has shifted more from a client-side language to a more universal language. So what are the typically advantages of JavaScript and the related thing? The first top area is efficiency. I think JavaScript as a technology has a lot of you know, predefined patterns and functions which are automatically by default presented with the framework. So no matter which framework we use, you will already get some predefined functionalities in place which a developer can start using and start building applications. So this saves a lot of time for the developer and he can actually create workable code and deliverable implementation very soon using JavaScript framework. So efficiency is a very critical aspect. The second aspect is the security. So whatever JavaScript framework we use, they will be coming with a lot of you know, default security with implementation and also different modules which can be integrated with the basic application to build security. So when it comes to things like authentication, authorization, encryption, cryptography, digital signatures, and anything we, which we talk about, all these things are automatically available in majority of the JavaScript frameworks. And apart from that, many of the JavaScript frameworks are automatically or in general supported by an open source community. So developers keep on contributing us and the uh, individuals who are actually working on building the application and we use those functionalities and sort of you know apply the security related pattern into the application itself. The next part is basically the cost part. One of the most critical factors in any implementation is cost. So the whole focus on open source was basically to make sure that people can actually start using implementation without paying any type of funding at a very initial stage. And so most of the option frameworks are open source and typically available using it. Or, you know those open source repositories so individuals can actually keep on downloading features and then start using them many of them are frequently updated so you can try using the features you know, very very easily and you don't have to spend any type of you know, initial funding to buy these frameworks and so from an overall costing perspective this gives you a big advantage because many times one of the most critical factors is cost itself from that perspective i think javascript frameworks in general more or less are open source and so this is a very good feature for programmers to actually start using it and actually using it more from an end-to-end -end implementation perspective as well. So let's first talk about Angular and Angular. So I think there is one question from Samir and he wants to understand how exactly do Angular and Amber differ from each other. So we'll also try to address that question. So Angular and Amber in general are two client side MC frameworks. The dominant focus of both these frameworks was single page applications. Okay. And so when you talk about single page application, it is basically an approach in which in the very beginning of the application, a single page will be loaded, which will contain the home page, and then it will be different in the parts to access different parts of the application, which will be different templates showing you know, different digital representation. Additionally, the web applications will actually involve in a lot of you know requests going to the server after the initial page was loaded, and that would take a lot of time. 
but with the introduction of the single feed application approach, the number of requests for the server got effectively reduced, and any such request in general will be handled to Ajax. Okay, so from the end user perspective, this gave a very good advantage to the consumer. Angular Chase and Amber, both of them support the client-side MVC approach. They were started by two different, I would say, groups of individuals. Angular was primarily started by the Google team, and Amber started by the Amber team. Both of them have their own way of doing the client MVC. Amber, in general, is more of a framework which, in terms, can be considered a more end-to-end -end of client-side MVC, with all the typical approaches redefined. Angular is something more of a framework which also gives a certain amount of flexibility to the developer building another solution part of it. And in terms of the way the frameworks have turned up, I think Amber has been really slow. Angular has been pretty fast. It started with Angular 1 and then shifted to Angular 2 and now to Angular 4. And you know, the way the whole concept works is pretty, pretty different. Also, from a learning curve perspective, I think Angular is something which you will be able to start pretty, happy, pretty quickly. But right? Amber, you will need some amount of time to understand how to concept. So, from that perspective, I think Angular is something you know, which will work for you pretty fast. And I think that's been the way Angular popularity increased. And now, with a lot of contribution from the community and a lot of people releases, I think anyone who really is trying to use Lines and MEC is pretty much focused on Angular. Now let's talk about React and Vue. So both of them are again slightly different, so they are more of a Vue centric you know, solutions. React is more for library. Vue is still considered to be more of a framework on the Vue side. But React basically was inspired as a component driven library, which basically was designed to solve a single purpose that is for a developer to actually think about building user interfaces as components and then combining together to actually build large you know, components here. And so that was a pretty dominant focus. You actually try to use the same concept of component-based development, but then it also has certain other features like in terms of you know more seamless integration with HTML and MVC. Whereas uh, React basically follows a different approach, they have a of JSX which combines HTML and JavaScript, and that's something which is being used. But both of them are centric to view-based presentations. Meteor is quite different. Meteor uh, is an end-to-end framework for mobile-based application development, and in turn it actually combines technologies like Angular. Node.js and Mongo and then to actually help developers to have an end-to-end framework solution which can build fast mobile applications. So here you don't have to really choose individual technology that is layer. They're already part of it with your so it's a single solution for everything. So for people who are actually focusing more on mobile-based implementation and quick applications, definitely Meteor is a very good choice. Okay. So now let's move forward and talk about why React.js is popular, why it is used. So React.js basically tried to introduce some very interesting concepts. So React in general is usually used with a state you know, management tool. But the idea is that the way the view is going to be represented and the way the view will be changed is controlled to a certain process. Okay, so if you have three scenarios like a initial data or a real-time data or a user input, all of them will basically go through some type of dispatch mechanism, which will in turn update the store. The store can be considered as a representation of the data or the state, and this change in the store or the state will be reflected in the review. So the view by itself is not able to control the way it can change. So it has to follow a certain process, okay? Which typically is more towards the one-way data flow. And this whole process of one-way data flow and I would say addition in a certain manner only with certain restrictions has made React a pretty popular technology, okay? So there are no unexpected changes. Testing is more accurate. These are some of the key advantages to get. But React has tried to solve all these different aspects and you know, made the whole technology much better and better in terms of performance as well as the user memory. So this is just a you know, representation of the same diagram. So we can now move forward. So what is our main challenge with DOM manipulation? So DOM manipulation is turns out to be very expensive. And that's something which actually represents the way the HTML looks like. Now traditionally what is happening is that changes to the DOM are very expensive because you have to actually iterate to the entire DOM structure to make the money. And this has been a challenge to work. Okay, so when you have large DOM structures, this basically means that it takes a huge amount of time. So traditionally, DOM manipulation has been a very expensive, you know, I would say, problem for us. But React has tried to change that. And we try to understand how exactly they try to change it. So in React, basically, there's a traditional you know, layer in between, which is termed as a virtual DOM. So this basically sits between the browser and the DOM. Whenever there is a change in the DOM structure, what's the virtual DOM will try to understand what that change is. Okay? And it will only apply the differential to the result. This approach uh, has not been done a lot of other technologies, but React is one of the first technologies to introduce this concept, which right now is being adopted by many other things as well. And I think the example we just discussed was about Vue.js. Okay. So this basically means that the changes happen much faster. So your speed improves, your memory usage is lesser, and definitely you get much better performance. Okay. So now let's move forward. So what is React.js? So React.js is basically a front-end JavaScript library which was actually developed by Facebook. And it was basically used to develop interactive as well as mobile-based applications. And it basically follows more of a template-based structure, which in general is a combination of JavaScript and HTML, which basically helps it to define the overall layout of the HTML and also provide you know, the JavaScript-based operation as well, which gives it a lot of power. So this, and so obviously, as I said, it started from Facebook, but then 
as facebook found more value to the whole technology of react they actually moved this to the community and now at this stage it is basically maintained by the open source community people are adding features to yeah. and you know a lot of people also building components and they are you know, contributing which you know new developers can get adopt and use them for their own implementation okay. so let's move forward now so what is react so first concept as i said was basically the whole which meant that any change is happening to the dom structure will be determined using something called the different patch algorithm so different patch algorithm basically means that you post find for what are the differences into the current dom and the changes which are going to come in. and then it will apply the patch of only the changes into the real dom which means that the whole process of DOM updation will happen much, much faster. The second process is basically one-way binding. So as I was saying that the changes in the view can happen only in a certain process. Okay. So basically what happens here is that there is an action basically which determines you know, what is going to be the flow. Okay. Then you have something called a state which indicate that what is the current data representation and what is the possible future representation. Okay. And then you have something called as a dispatch action which basically applies the action and the current state and determines the new state. So in terms of technologies like Redux, this is basically termed as a reduction. Okay. So but what happens here is that the overall change to the state can only happen through this process and no other ways. Okay. Which basically means that there cannot be unexpected changes to the state. And so the whole view changes are going to be following only this process. Which basically means that since there are no unexpected changes, so you can ensure that if at all the problem occurs in the way the view works, then it will happen only in a certain stage of that process, which can be easily be worked and so on. So this also saves a lot of time in terms of the testing process. Okay. So one way binding is one of the key advantages in React, which has meant that it has helped developers to control the view rendering and the adoption of this technology has increased tremendously. Okay. And the third area is basically the server side rendering. So one of the very important aspects in the JavaScript space is the initial render. Okay. So whenever the application is loaded, in many cases what happens is you want the representation to be driven from the server and then the further rendering can be taken care of at the time setting. Now the reason why it's important is because you can actually use a lot of server side features. You can make use of technologies like caching, uh, etc to basically store the initial data into the cache and then so whenever you make a request, it will just make a request either to the server side or the cache and render the data. The initial load time of the rendering is immensely done faster. And this is basically handled from the server side end. So if you see this diagram, we basically are showing a combination of browser React and Node.js, which is one of the JavaScript based server side technologies which can be used to define APIs and also to help in defining the overall layout of the server. So this is one of the key areas why React.js has been very popular in the recent times. Now let's move forward. And let's try to again get an insight about the virtual DOM. Okay, so we've already discussed it, let's try to really understand it. So in general, what happens is, so in the diagram, you see a model of view and a DOM. So typically what happens, the model gives the data to the view, which in turn creates a DOM. Okay, so DOM is nothing but the structure of the data will be laid out. Then in the second step, we basically now what happens is, whenever the data is updated by the model, the view had to create a new DOM point. So the DOM creation process had to happen multiple times, which meant that a lot of additional data structures were created and a lot of memory consumption was also being impacted. This obviously puts a heavy load on the view and makes processing slower. So I think one of the key goals of any UI application is to get a very good response time. And if you spend time in just the DOM manipulation or the DOM operation, then the user will basically be waiting for most of their time. And he's really going to get feeling that the application is running very, very slow, which ideally should not happen. Okay, so that's one of the key objectives for any web-based application. Okay. So in the React, we see that between the real DOM and the browser or the view, we basically have this virtual DOM, which understands that how the DOM will be updated. So what happens here is that with React is when the model gives the data to the view, if the DOM is empty, React will create a DOM for it. And whenever the data gets updated, React will create a virtual DOM for it, compared with the current DOM for the previous one, and only apply those changes which are different. Okay. So this basically means that the process happens much, much faster here. Okay. So as I said, one of the changes are calculated, it will update the real DOM with only the elements that have actually changed. And this is basically happening to a process called as diff and patch algorithm. Diff basically is used to determine the differences, and patch is basically used to apply the changes to the real time for the only elements which are changed. Let's move forward now. React JS application. So these are some of the organizations which have actually adopted. So we have companies like Facebook, and then Yahoo, Uber, Netflix, and then New York Times, and many more. In fact, the companies like Walmart and PayPal and so on. The reason why this company adopted is because they found a lot of value in helping the developer think about building the overall UI as a set of components. So this is one of the questions which come up in terms of what exactly is a component-based development, right? So component-based development basically means that whenever you think about implementation, you think about components. And here in React, we are thinking about components from a user interface perspective. Okay, so everything, anything in the UI representation will be built by using small, small components. Okay, so as a developer, you first think about components, you build them, and then you start building the UI using the components. So one of the key advantages you get here is that they become reusable. As a developer, once you've created the components first time, you can use them for all the future UI implementation which you're going to build. It basically helps you tremendously in the usability of That is one of the key focus areas of okay, how it works. So a lot of these companies have actually adopted it because they found a lot of value in this approach, and it actually spent and sort of saved a lot of their development time. And in many cases where people are preferring to use an 